at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. A deadly shooting at a downtown bar on Sunday night, leaving the owners devastated. It's also called into question security measures at places like bars and concert venues. Two people were killed and several others injured when police say a 19 year old opened fire at the Ventura bar. While SAPD is investigating, so is the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission looking at factors like whether alcohol played a part. Our Stephanie Cerna spoke with another concert venue owner, the owner of the Paper Tiger, about he, how he says he and his staff work together to keep customers and their employees safe. It sounds like a cliche, but but safety is really the most important thing. I mean, we're in the business at Paper Tiger of helping people have a good time. And um, whether that's a rock and roll show, a hip hop show, um, an EDM dance party type thing, we want people to have a great time. Um, but making sure they do it safely is really important. Paper Tiger owner Chad Carey says they have security at every single show, no matter how small the crowd. Depending on the, the kind of show, there have been shows in the past where, you know, depending on the promoter, depending on the artist, um, that we've, you know, wanted people down and had, you know, pat downs and things like that. A lot of it depends on what the artist's demands are. Chad says he knows the owners of Ventura, and what happened at their venue was just horrible. Uh, they're passionate about giving artists in San Antonio a place to perform and um, to see that happen despite their best efforts. They, the, the, the folks that run Ventura are great people. They do a wonderful job running it. And um, it's the sort of thing that that could happen anywhere. And I don't mean any music venue. I mean, it could happen in any any place. Chad says Ventura also had security at their show that night. And the problem was a 19 year old shooter. This is the thing where it was, you know, a horrible garbage human being that decided to do something horrible. And, you know, um, unfortunately, I don't know that that's the sort of thing that you can, that anyone could ever prevent totally from happening. Um, you know, we take precautions as I'm sure everybody else does. And one of those security precautions Chad Carey tells us is I do not allow backpacks into the paper tiger. Now they also tell us that they don't plan on changing the security measures that they already have in place anytime soon. We are live just north of downtown. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. All right, thank you, Stephanie. And happening right now, a vigil for the victims of Sunday night shooting is getting underway at the Ventura Bar. That's just off of Jones and Broadway downtown. 20-year-old Robert J. Martinez III and 25-year-old Alejandro Robles were both killed. This vigil is open to the public and will have coverage coming up tonight on the Night Beat. Last week, San Antonio's police chief said members of a federal task force, including San Antonio police officers, shot and killed a wanted felon after he rammed his truck into occupied police vehicles. Well, now surveillance video obtained by our defenders casts doubt on the chief's account of exactly what happened. Dylan Collier has reviewed the footage and has more on what it shows. Chief William McManus twice made the claim while speaking with reporters January 13th that Randy Goodell was shot and killed inside a truck after he rammed into law enforcement vehicles with officers inside. This video, recorded on a home surveillance system, disputes the chief's version of the fatal encounter and shows the truck containing Goodell was parked and backed into a driveway when task force members fired their weapons. You can watch the video in its entirety right now at ksat.com. SAPD responds to this footage on the night beat. For the defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. China now trying to contain the spread of a potentially deadly virus ahead of millions celebrating the Chinese New Year on Saturday. Public transportation has been suspended in Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. 17 people have died, more than 500 cases now confirmed of the coronavirus. Other Asian countries also report cases of their own. Now here in the U.S., the only confirmed case, a man in Seattle who had been to Wuhan, China. He had flu-like symptoms, but is now in what health officials are calling satisfactory condition while he remains in isolation. Our Jesse Degollado spoke to an infectious disease specialist at UT Health San Antonio who says a vaccine is in the works, but it will take some time before it's ready.
Unless you've been to Wuhan, China, where an animal market became ground zero for the coronavirus or had contact with a confirmed case. It's unlikely that you have this disease. Along with treating patients, a UT Health San Antonio associate professor teaches students about infectious diseases. But this latest strain of coronavirus is new. It appears to be a respiratory virus. Uh, we're still learning more about the signs and symptoms in people. Yet thermal scanners checking for elevated body temperatures already are in use. They're at major U.S. airports with connecting flights in and out of China. But the incubation period, Bowling says, is still unknown. Even so. The CDC does have a diagnostic test so that they can actually confirm if there's infection in place. So I think that's a helpful tool as well. Besides, he says, countries are sharing information, even China. That's helpful that all these resources are being put to bear to see, learn more about this. The fear factor is understandable, he says. It's the time of year when there's a lot of coughing and sneezing, including the flu. What we do every day and maybe should be doing more of is what's recommended that we keep doing to help prevent the spread. All well, the general health practices are still the ways to go right now for respiratory viruses to include this one. Lessons learned from other coronavirus strains, he says, could help further contain any other infections. As far as the U.S. goes... No need to panic. Right now, the CDC is putting this at a, a low, immediate risk. Jesse de Guillermo, he said 12 News. Was and the World Health Organization will meet tomorrow to discuss whether to declare the coronavirus a public health emergency. And turning to our other top stories at six, what the jury heard was nothing short of chilling as a rape victim described her attack for police. It was part of the first day of testimony in the trial of a man accused of being the medical center rapist. 20 year old Anton Harris, who was 17 at the time, accused of raping and robbing a nurse at her medical center apartment in May of 2017. Her rape among a series of attacks in the medical center area between 2016 and 2017, in which Harris is a suspect. Speaking to the first officer on the scene, the woman told how she was attacked as she was going into her apartment. That conversation recorded on the officer's body cam video. The security camera video from a nearby convenience store and DNA evidence led police to Harris two days later. This is Harris's second trip to court in this case. Last August, a plea deal for a 40 year sentence rejected by the judge. His trial was then ordered. If he's convicted, Harris facing a maximum punishment of life in prison. Due to the nature of this case, we are not identifying the victim. A man has been accused of attacking a disabled person before taking off in that person's car. Carlos Vega is charged with aggravated robbery. Police say in December, the suspect was seen at a business in the 2600 block of South Presa Street. Police say witnesses told them Vega was asking people to pawn pieces of jewelry for him at a nearby pawn shop. At some point, Vega allegedly went up to the victim as he was getting into his vehicle. That's when police say Vega pulled him out of that car and took off. Police say surveillance video shows the struggle. The victim's vehicle was later found and returned. The San Antonio police say these two, 47-year-old Belinda Alvarado and 45-year-old Peter Carrion, each facing a charge of theft of a vehicle. Alvarado allegedly stole keys from an HEB shopper's purse while Carrion kept watch. This happened at the store on Highway 281 in Stone Oak. The two drove off in the woman's Buick. They were later caught driving a separate stolen vehicle. The Buick was recovered at Carrion's West Side home. Police are asking for help finding this suspect wanted for aggravated robbery. Officers tell us it was on January 15th when this person walked into a family dollar on Blanco Road on the north side. Police say the suspect pretended to pay for an item but then flashed a gun at the cashier before leaving the store. San Antonio police say there is still a lot they need to know about a deadly shooting on the southeast side. A 19 year old woman is dead after shots were fired overnight inside an apartment on East South Cross. As Katrina Weber reports, investigators are trying to track down a person they believe may know that shooter. In a first floor apartment, San Antonio police found themselves on the ground level of a death investigation. They flooded into the reserve at Pecan Valley Apartments around 1.30 this morning in response to a call about a shooting. And within minutes, they found out it was true. Officers on scene told us a 19-year-old woman was here in a bedroom with a single gunshot wound to her head. There's still some unanswered uh, questions that we're looking into uh, to determine exactly what happened here. Police 
did get a few clues up front from other people who were in the apartment in the 4,000 block of East South Cross. They say they pointed a finger at a man who wasn't there anymore. Police say the others who were in that apartment told them right after they heard the gunshot ring out, they saw the man walk out, get into his car and drive away. According to a preliminary report, homicide investigators now consider that 23-year-old man to be a suspect in this case, perhaps the only person who can tell them who pulled the trigger and why. The woman died later at a hospital. We just know that the suspect and the victim were alone uh, in a room by themselves. Investigators sealed off the entire apartment for nearly five hours while they dug through it for evidence. They did not find a gun. Police do hope to find answers, though, by tracking down that suspect. They ask anyone with information about this case to call them. Katrina Weber, Case at 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. Trans guide camera at 410 and Cherry Ridge. You can see the pavement is damp out there, but we're happy to report no major traffic issues at this hour. No rain, still wet out there though and gloomy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just been dreary all day. That picture earlier from Transguide and this one, they've been about the same throughout the day, Adam. Yeah, it's what I like to call an old fashioned rainy day. Just a classic rainy day. We had the showers earlier. Now we're just dealing with fog and drizzle. The aquifer is responding a little bit to the rainfall. So far up a tenth of a foot, but that number should continue to rise. Take a look at our pollen count. Mold is high. It usually spikes when we have these damp conditions. Mountain cedar moderate at 480 and ash. Welcome to the pollen count. It's the first time we've seen ash. It's low at 10. So foggy night and commute tomorrow morning. We will have some sunny and comfortable days, but also a little chance of rain over the weekend. I'll tell you more about all this coming up, Myra. All right, thanks, Adam. Turning now to Washington, where day two of President Donald Trump's impeachment trial continues following a marathon debate over the ground rules. Opening statements got underway today. For the next three days, the Senate will hear formal arguments from the Democratic House managers. Democrats saying today the evidence is clear that the president abused his power and obstructed Congress, and they insist there is more to uncover. But their repeated attempts to subpoena witnesses and documents before today's opening statements failed. And they don't care what they destroy in the process of trying to destroy Donald Trump. I do care. So to my Democratic colleagues, you can say what you want about me, but I'm covering up nothing. Democrats are holding out hope that four Republican senators will vote across party lines in order to meet the simple majority needed to subpoena witnesses. Is still headed at six, the trial of Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein now underway. Opening arguments plus what to expect in the days ahead. And a breakthrough in the detection of esophageal cancer. How just a single trip to the doctor could help save your life. Anyone from babies to seniors can suffer from GERD, a chronic condition that causes acid reflux and heartburn. It can actually be an early sign of cancer. This year, 20,000 people will be told they have esophageal cancer. Ursula Perry shows us a new way to detect the beginnings of it, and it can be done in just minutes at your doctor's office. Take this capsule, put it into your mouth, and then swallow it. David Brown is one of the first people in the United States to try out a new test to detect a very serious cancer, a cancer that claimed his dad's life. Throughout my childhood, he would be you know, running to the, the restroom and vomiting, and he became jaundiced. That was due to um, uh, liver metastasis you know, from the esophageal cancer. David already struggles with severe heartburn. Just a really bad stomach ache that went on for days. A lot of people live with reflux, live with Barrett's esophagus, live with esophageal cancer, and they just don't know it. Until now, the only way to detect esophageal cancer would be with an endoscopy, where patients are sedated. A flexible camera is fed through the mouth, down to the stomach, taking four to five hours out of the patient's day. The new cytosponge takes just seven minutes without sedation. The capsule, the size of a multivitamin, is connected to a string. The patient swallows the capsule, the outer coating dissolving in their stomach, releasing an expandable sponge. The doctor then pulls the string. As 
we're pulling on the string, the expunge is touching the, the esophageal tissue and collecting cells, and it collects about 500,000 cells um, throughout the esophagus. The cells are then analyzed for any signs of cancer. I really do think this is a, a, a game changer for this disease. Not all esophageal cancers can be prevented, but the risk of getting it can be lowered if you avoid alcohol and tobacco. Obesity has been linked to esophageal cancers, and so it's also important that you get treated for reflux or Barrett's esophagus in order to prevent or at least reduce your risk of getting cancer. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, off and on all day. We saw showers out there. The question is, did it amount to anything? Yeah, that is a good question. And yes, it did. Generally under an inch, and I'd say on average around Bear County, about a half inch to two thirds of an inch. You know, so, we'll take it. It's exactly. Exactly. in South Texas. We'll take it. And it didn't come at a cost. You know, it yeah. didn't come yeah. as a result of severe weather or anything like that. So just good soaking rainfall that we had today. And I want to start you off with a look at some of the photos of rain gauges across parts of our area. This one first. On the south side of Bear County, three quarters of an inch measured in his rain gauge there and Canyon Lake Aggie showing almost an inch on the south end of Canyon Lake. Looks like about eight to nine tenths of an inch there. So yeah, some pockets of pretty good rainfall, but of course it varied quite a bit across South Texas with just a trace in parts of the hill country and closer to the Rio, Gra Rio Grande at the airport in San Antonio. About two thirds of an inch. Not bad. Kelly Field, about a half inch Kerrville three tenths of an inch and Bernie a little over half inch. New, New Braunfels just shy of an inch even. All right, so the rain is gone, but now we're dealing with the leftover effects of what's happening outside, and that's just the low fog and drizzle. It has really affected visibilities. Randolph reporting one mile visibility, two miles New Braunfels and Stinson. And notice in our future cast here for visibility as we go through the night after midnight, We'll, I think, have widespread visibilities under a mile, especially in and around Bear County and surrounding areas. That should last all the way through the morning commute. Notice at 7 a.m., most of Bear County is still socked in in the fog and especially southeastward, but we're starting to clear out in the hill country. We'll have a wind shift right about that time, and that should scour out all that fog by 9 a.m. So despite a foggy night and possibly some issues on the roads tomorrow morning because of the fog and reduced visibility, overall a pretty sunny and comfortable day. So clearly we could use the rainfall in more ways than one, but here's a look at the drought monitor, which by the way will be updated tomorrow. And you look at Bear County, north side abnormally dry, the rest of the county considered in a moderate drought. And of course we have extreme drought off to the west where you see the dark red, Del Rio, Uvalde, down toward Eagle Pass. Well, let's put the rain on top of this today, the actual radar signature and returns, and it was a good shield of rain in company, encompassing the vast majority of South Texas and basically every part of South Texas could use the moisture and just about all of us got it. Again, it wasn't a drought buster, but a little bit of a drought denter. So that's some good news here and the aquifer continues to respond to that rainfall. Sky is clearing in parts of the hill country and that's just going to be, I think, in the northern and western hill country where you'll see stars tonight. The system that's affecting us is big, far reaching system stretching all the way up to the Canadian border. Next couple of days, we'll have a lot of sunshine. Here's our future cast Thursday, Friday, sunny, very comfortable. Then we're shifting the focus to a little disturbance that's going to come in from Mexico and that will give us some clouds on Saturday. Notice 10 a.m. mostly cloudy and then maybe a few little light sprinkles or showers as we get into Saturday afternoon and evening. Most of the rain should be along the Gulf coastline. That's where we're expecting the bulk of the energy with this system. Nonetheless, we can't rule out just a few little light showers here and there. Again, that's late Saturday. That's our only real next chance of rain. 59 right now in San Antonio, 57 Uvalde, 60 in New Braunfels. Tomorrow we'll start the day right around 50 degrees with the morning fog, otherwise sunny and 72 by the afternoon. So drying out nicely and Friday's looking sunny and comfortable as well. Then just that little hiccup on Saturday with that slight chance of rain, otherwise a comfortable weekend and looking and feeling good on Sunday. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, right. Adam. <laughs> Tonight's game overhyped. Sounds like Zion. <laughs> 
is going one on five, like he's taking on the entire Spurs. <laughs> exactly, and I'll tell you what, Zion scored 22, I believe, against the Spurs during the preseason. Of course, it's just preseason, but Pelicans fans indeed all hyped up that Zion is returning. He will face the silver and black. Plus, in high school ball, Highlands guard Layla Mendoza is now a part of the 2K club. Coming up. They've been a big factor because they trust me with the ball to score. She's fearless. Like, she's fearless, and I think that the confidence that she plays with just goes off to her teammates. Now that fearless attitude and those great teammates are key reasons why Highlands guard Layla Mendoza joined the 2,000-point club in big board sports. <laughs> Winners of two straight, the Spurs will take their show on the road tonight to face the Pelicans. Both teams are outside the playoff picture looking in. San Antonio is one half game behind eighth place Memphis, while New Orleans is three games back. But this game, all about rookie Zion Williamson and his regular season debut. The highly touted Pelicans rookie averaged 23 points in three preseason games, but has been sidelined for the first half of the regular season with a meniscus injury. New Orleans is 11 and five their past 16 games, and they figure Zion will only give them a boost. He was asked what was the toughest part about coming back from knee surgery. Knee injury. The rehab workouts, um, the long and strenuous. Um, you know, it's a lot. Of, it was a lot of times when I just wanted to punch a wall or kick chairs because it's frustrating. Um, to not be able to move your body the way you want to, not to make any athletic movements. Um, I mean, it's tough, especially since I'm 19. And, I haven't even played my first NBA game, so it was it was tough, but I battled through. Spurs and Pelicans will face off tonight at 8:30 at the Smoothie King Arena in New Orleans. Turning to high school basketball, Highland senior guard Layla Mendoza recently topped 2,000 career points. She reached the milestone last week during the Owls' 61-48 win versus Burbank. Layla started playing basketball at the age of five and has turned into a scoring machine. She's one of the best in the area and leads District 27-5A in points per game. Layla says reaching 2K is pretty cool, but victories are even better. It means a lot to me. I wasn't really trying to hit it. I was just trying to get the wins so we could make it far in the playoffs. Uh, it meant a lot to my mom because she's been wanting me to like get records and stuff. So it means a lot to her. A four-year varsity starter, Layla is the 24th area girl to score 2,000 points, so it's a big deal. Coach Viatric wanted to honor Layla during the game, but that plan didn't work out. I had it all planned out. I was going to call a timeout and, you know, celebrate. And because of the circumstances of the game, we didn't get to do that. And so somebody, she hit it. And I don't even know if she knew she hit it. And then somebody was shooting a free throw. So I called her over and she thought I was going to yell at her. And I gave her a hug and she's like, coach, are you kidding me? And I'm like, man, just let me do this. And so uh, we kind of laughed about it. And then we went on. And so then we kind of recognized it at the end of the game. I love that story. Yeah, Highlands is 22 and 7, 10 and 0 in District 27-5A. The first place Lady Owls will face third place Sam Houston Friday night and second place Edison Tuesday. So two big games coming up for them. Yeah, she thought she was in trouble. And right, so right. she had 2,000 points. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well. Thanks, Sarah. You got it. Still to come at 6.30, details from the courtroom where the rape trial of Harvey Weinstein is now underway. Plus, court documents reveal shocking new details in the arrest of a Phoenix, Arizona mother who's been accused of killing her three young children by smothering them. The rape trial of Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein is now underway in New York City. In today's opening statements, the prosecution detailed the graphic and violent accusations. Meanwhile, the defense says that Weinstein's accusers are trying to have it both ways, showing what it describes as friendly exchanges after the alleged assaults took place. ABC's Trevor Alt has a breakdown from the courtroom. More than two years after the first accusation surfaced against disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein, his long-awaited trial now underway in New York City. Think you're going to get a fair trial today? Yeah. 
What makes you say that? I have good lawyers. Weinstein is charged with five felony sex crimes, including rape, and faces life in prison if convicted. In today's opening statements, the prosecution offering a scathing description of the accusations against the producer, saying Weinstein, quote, was not just a titan in Hollywood, but a rapist, and the evidence from both the witness stand and evidence will show that that man was a sexual predator. Weinstein's defense attorney stating that's not true, calling the assistant DA statements, quote, a preview to a movie you're not going to see. Weinstein's attorney showed the jury what the defense has called loving emails between Weinstein and some of his accusers, which were sent after the alleged assaults took place. The attorney saying it is not going to be this predator-prey dynamic that the state so badly wants you to believe. Weinstein has pleaded not guilty and has repeatedly insisted any sexual encounters were consensual. While the charges in this New York trial are centered around the allegations from two women, more than 80 have come forward with accusations of sexual misconduct against him. I joined these other women who were also harmed by Harvey Weinstein to say, we aren't going anywhere. Six women who have accused Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault are expected to testify over the course of this trial. And remember, as this is happening, Harvey Weinstein's also facing charges of rape and sexual assault from separate incidents in Los Angeles. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. And meanwhile, in the case against actor Cuba Gooding Jr., two more women will be allowed to testify during his trial. The New York Times reported the ruling from the judge in New York City. Gooding faces charges of forcible touching and sexual abuse in the third degree. He's pleading not guilty to all four counts in the indictment. After the case began, 19 additional women came forward. They say Gooding touched their bodies in various ways without their consent. Presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard has filed a defamation lawsuit against former Secretary of State and 2016 Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton. Gabbard claims during an interview last year, Clinton lied about Gabbard's ties with Russia. In that interview, Clinton didn't name Gabbard, but she did use a female pronoun when referencing a candidate who she claimed was favored by Russia and being groomed for a third party run. The Hawaii Democrat is requesting at least 50 million in damages, plus other unspecified compensation. The Clinton spokesman called the lawsuit ridiculous. Around America, new disturbing details in a murder case in Phoenix where police say a mother has confessed to smothering her three small children, all of them under the age of four. Rachel Henry now facing three counts of first degree murder. Court documents reveal Henry was home with the children while their father and another relative who lived there were out. Those documents say she admitted to smothering each child individually before laying them down as if they were taking a nap. Henry appeared in front of a judge who gave her a $3 million bond. I don't know how I'd be able to get any money on a job or anything. Well, it's, it's a sizable amount, I acknowledge. I do think a sizable bond is appropriate based on the... The accusations against you in the nature of the charges. The police say Henry struggled with addiction, according to investigators, family welfare services in Oklahoma, went as far as taking her kids away because of her drug problem. A plane headed to South Korea made an emergency landing in Alaska last night. The Delta plane had some mechanical problems and was forced to stop at Fairbanks International Airport. Ground crews were at the airport and prepared for that arrival. The flight left Detroit with an original destination of Seoul before it was diverted. The plane landed in Alaska without any issues. Delta Airlines sent a replacement plane shortly after. Around Texas, beer cans littered Interstate 45 in Houston following a fatal crash this morning. The driver of a big rig carrying empty Bud Light cans suddenly left the roadway and crashed into a tree, losing that load along the way, as you can see. The driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt, was thrown from the cab. He was pronounced dead at the scene. And now to a recall alert tonight. Toyota and Honda are recalling millions of vehicles for unrelated safety issues. Toyota is recalling 3.4 million cars. The problem there, potentially defective equipment that's meant to protect passengers during a crash. The models affected include the Corolla, Corolla Matrix, Avalon and Avalon HV lines. Meanwhile, Honda is recalling 2.7 million cars. Honda says some Acuras may have dysfunctional Takata airbag inflators and they may not deploy properly. Monty Python star Terry Jones died yesterday. Jones most notably known for his role as a member of the Monty Python comedy troupe with whom he directed films, including Life of Brian. Jones passed away at his London home with his wife Anna by his side. He'd reportedly been suffering with various health issues, including dementia. 
Jones was 77. Coming up in the buzz, how the outcome of the Super Bowl could help you and your friends score some free wings. Plus, Will Smith now driving for Lyft. Oh, it was a big surprise for riders in more ways than one. Taking the show on the road to the KSAT News at 9 set here in the middle of our newsroom to talk about what is coming up at 9. We have a series at 9 o'clock we call our Understand series where we take on various different topics that have made headlines, dive a little bit deeper, and explain what exactly they're all about. And I'm a fan of this series. What they're going to talk about tonight is shock probation. I believe last week they talked about the census. They've talked about a lot of different things. Shock probation, what is it and what is it supposed to accomplish? That will be explained in full during the nine o'clock. Also, you have the business briefing that you do every week. Something weekly we do here. We talk with uh, the business editor of the San Antonio Express News to really focus on some main topics uh, making waves in the business community within San Antonio. Tonight, we're going to be discussing about the economic forecast for 2020 locally. Toyota's big announcement about a shift in production at their plant here and also a USAA annual drop in bonuses. We talk about what that drop is all about, but also why everyone else who doesn't work at USAA ought to take note of that. Yeah, and talking about drops, we're going to talk about Florida <laughs> and what's dropping from the trees there, iguanas. I guess because it's so chilly, the iguanas are just... They're, they're stunned by the cold, apparently, yeah. and they just fall out of trees. On so, to people. <laughs> on to whatever happens to be below. A funky story. We're going to explain why this is happening and how people are reacting. Frozen Iguanas would be a great band name. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Adam Kasky, who is in the studio to talk a little bit about the weather. Frozen Iguanas, what do you think, Adam? Yeah, you know, I actually came across a tweet from the national, one of the National Weather Service offices down in uh, Florida, and they said, this is something we don't forecast often, but anticipate iguanas falling from trees <laughs> because of the cold that they have there. And Katie's going to have a detailed uh, look at uh, what it was like in Florida this morning and that anomaly coming up on the news at 9. Right now we're 59 degrees. We'll just gradually fall a few more degrees over the next few hours. No big temperature changes right now or really overnight. But get ready for not just some fog, but also sunny and comfortable weather before our next chance of rain returns. See you in a few minutes to talk about it. All right, check this out. NASA asking for your help to name the next Mars rover. NASA originally received 28,000 pitches coming from U.S. students ranging from kindergarten to high school. Volunteer judges whittled that down to nine final names. They include endurance, tenacity, promise, perseverance, vision, clarity, ingenuity, <laughs> fortitude, and courage. Okay, we'll see which one comes out on top. There's kind of a theme there. Yeah, I noticed that yeah. as you strung all of those together. Yeah, you can vote in an online poll, which is open until next Monday. Those votes will help NASA pick the winning name, which will be announced on March 15th. All right, in the buzz today, no word on whether the license plate said fresh or if there were dice in the mirror, but... See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> Some lucky fans recently got a lift from the Fresh Prince himself. Will Smith went undercover as a driver as part of a promotion called Bad Boys for Lift. That's a play on words cross-promoting Lift with Smith's new movie, Bad Boys for Life. I wonder if they did this in Miami. Because that would be great. That would be All right, the unsuspecting passengers were very surprised by their celebrity driver. With one so shocked, she blurted out a few not safe for TV words. <laughs> passengers who had the chance to ride with Smith also received a free year of lift rides. Could you imagine getting in the car? That's, and, that'd be pretty what? cool. Yeah. As the market for streaming services gets more crowded, Netflix says it is, ha, has a head start on its rivals. The company says it added close to 9 million new subscribers in the last quarter of 2019, beating expectations. It also expects to line up 7 million more by the end of this quarter. But on the downside, its growth in the U.S. and Canada has been sluggish. The numbers were released as competing streaming services heat up. Netflix going head to head not only with newcomers like Apple Plus and Disney Plus, but also upcoming competitors like HBO Max and NBC's Peacock. Hmm. There's an option out there for everybody. Yeah. 
Buffalo Wild Wings is making a bet with football fans ahead of the biggest game of the year. The chain is betting that this year's Super Bowl will not go into overtime. And if it does, the chain says it will give free wings to everyone in the U.S. and Canada. Interesting. Now, according to Buffalo Wild Wings, Las Vegas sports bettors believe there is a 10% chance the game will go into overtime. The San Francisco 49ers take on the Kansas City Chiefs in Miami on February 2nd. OT for wings. Oh. <laughs> I like it. There he is. Hi, Adam. I'm back into making thermometers. <laughs> yes, we can hear the, the glass clinking. Yeah, yeah. I, you, yeah, you heard yeah. the clink in the glass. Ooh, hey, ooh, it's time. It's my time. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so is, is the rain done for the week? Yeah, it is. It okay. is for now. And as we get into the weekend, we'll introduce another little chance of rain. But uh, it doesn't look like anything major, nothing to wash out part of your weekend or your weekend plans. But it was a good soaking rainfall for a good portion of South Texas. I know those of you Del Rio, Eagle Pass saying, well, not for us. Even La Prior, Carrizo Springs didn't get a whole lot of rainfall. But in and around San Antonio and then east of San Antonio, we had some good rain. You look at the blue and that really indicates less than an inch of rain. And that's what most of us got, especially in Bear County here. Stone Oak, about seven tenths of an inch. Alamo Ranch, about six tenths of an inch. Near Bronig Lake, seven tenths of an inch. So they actually got in on this rain event opposed to the uh, previous one. So that's good. And Seguin, about a half inch. At the airport in San Antonio, 0 0.65. So about two thirds of an inch. 59 degrees, our high temperature after a low of 49. So not a big difference in temperatures throughout the day today. And right now we're at 59 degrees. That's our current high temperature. But here's the key. We have that visibility, which is reduced a little bit. You can see still damp roadways here. The airport's off in the distance, not the best view of the airport as we often have. Visibility is down a bit, and I do anticipate fog to be an issue through the night and even the morning commute tomorrow. Now in the hill country, I don't expect as much fog, but through the morning commute tomorrow, locally and even some surrounding counties around San Antonio. Yeah, some reduced visibility and still some dampness out there. Visibility of three miles Stinson along with Randolph, Castroville seven at the airport in San Antonio, seven miles. Those will be fluctuating and I think dropping a bit more through the night. No real rain, just some drizzle and some sprinkles out there. Sprinkles lingering east of town. The actual Steadier rain is far to the east of us. I mean, even passing through Houston, that's not really steady rain. It's just quick passing showers. But the real activity is now closer to the Mississippi and it's up and down the Mississippi, basically from the Gulf Coastline, almost all the way up to Itasca State Park, the headwaters of the Mississippi River. You know, you can actually step across it there. Isn't that interesting? You can. It's just this narrow beginning to that huge river. OK, so anyway, a lot of moisture out there, right? A lot of moisture with this system. It's all east of us now. That upper disturbance is pushing out of town. Replacing it is going to be a lot of sunshine. Till we get into Saturday, another little disturbance is going to move in from Mexico. Gives us a 30% chance of rain. That's it, a 30% chance later in the day. So maybe a few sprinkles, a few brief showers, and some fog leading into Sunday morning. But that would be it. Unfortunately, no really good chance of rain within the foreseeable future right now. All right, so let's talk temperatures. Cool in Dallas at 44. You even get into the 30s, Arkansas and Louisiana. Amarillo, 48. Meanwhile, we're right around 60. I mean, we're on the tail end of this system that stretches all the way up basically to the Canadian border. So we're not really getting affected all that much temperature-wise with this. Not a big, strong cold front moving through by any means. So tomorrow morning at sunrise in the 40s in the hill country, closer to 50 degrees, in and around Bear County, and I think most of South Texas will be right around that 50 degree mark or in the lower 50s. Then we get into the afternoon. We'll clear out, have a lot of sunshine, and I think we'll be flirting with 80 in Catula and Laredo, even Carrizo Springs, well into the 70s. And here in San Antonio, probably about 72 degrees. That's after we start the day near 50 with the fog. Fog should be really eroded and eradicated by 9, 10 a.m. Then it's sunny and comfortable. Friday, sunny, comfortable near 70. That little hiccup with a slight chance of rain Saturday afternoon and evening. If you, you know, if you really want to fill up the rain gauge, unfortunately, we don't have anything anytime soon. Man. Great temperatures. Though. Yeah, it is very comfortable throughout. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. In case you missed it up next. Here's today's I see why am I?
morning, it's Wednesday. It is January 22nd. An overnight shooting on the southeast side has turned deadly. The police were called here to the reserve at Pecan Valley Apartments around 1.30 this morning. They say they found a 19-year-old woman who had a gunshot wound to her head. Officers told us there were five people in all inside the apartment at the time of the shooting. One other, a man, in the bedroom with the woman when she was shot. The others in the apartment told officers that they heard that gunshot, then saw the man walk out, get into his car and drive away. The woman was rushed to a hospital, but police here have confirmed that she did die. <laughs> That dramatic video you just saw and heard is what investigators here in San Antonio hope leads them to identify those men involved in the shooting. We're asking the public if anyone knows who they are. New Braunfels police say they have made an arrest in a murder case. They tell us Crystal Marie Mariales was charged with first degree felony murder. Police say that they were called to the 1500 block of Allison Drive to investigate a stabbing early this morning. When they got there, they found the victim, 32 year old Iris Velik. Velasquez dead. Madrigales' bond has not yet been set. And in the world of baseball, the Houston Astros will publicly apologize for stealing opposing teams' pitching signals. Well, the Astros owner, Jim Crane, made the announcement saying that the apology would take place at spring training. The MLB found that the team devised an illegal system of decoding and communicating signs during their 2017 championship season. The sign-stealing scheme resulted in the firing of the Astros' manager and the Astros' general manager. Some fog tonight through the morning commute tomorrow, then sunny and low 70s. What a Thursday. Looking ahead Friday, very similar, just sunny throughout though, in the upper 60s. Into Saturday, a little added cloud cover, a little disturbance, could throw just a few little sprinkles or nuisance showers our way, not a big deal. Then we get into Sunday, partly cloudy and pleasant, right near mm. 70 degrees. So overall, temperature is very comfortable. No big cold front anytime soon. No big warming trend either. All right, things looking good. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for watching the news at six. See you on the night beat at 10 and online at nine.